Uh, now to the subject of what we're here for. We're here to talk about seismic resiliency. Okay, now uh, just recently uh, I had the wonderful opportunity uh, to talk in front of about 350 people at Santa Monica Chamber of Commerce. We have our president CEO here, Laura Rosen. Thank you for being here. And this was uh, the 23rd Sustainable Quality Award in the city of Santa Monica. They have had this ongoing event where they choose businesses that are sustainable businesses or practicing sustainability. So they've been a leader in that. So one of the things when I got up, I said, okay, well, uh, I had to speak for a couple of minutes because of my sponsorship. I had this opportunity to speak. So one of the things that I came up with that day is that uh, what is the relationship of sustainability and resiliency? Sustainability is something that we all been very uh, conscious about last 15, 20 years especially, you know, uh, because of energy cost, because of our resources because we're all trying to be uh, efficient and and worry about the next generations okay sustainability and uh, so how do we do that well uh, uh, balancing economic social and environmental impacts of our actions but before i get there what is the relationship of resiliency and sustainability I came up with a very simple statement. I said, okay, if a building cannot stand a disaster, in our case, an earthquake, a major seismic event, if a building cannot stand, what difference does it make if we use the best recycled material in building the building or the best mechanical or electrical system, energy efficient system in the building. Think about it. So there is a direct relationship. Resiliency is sustainability. If you care about sustainability, by default, ladies and gentlemen, you care about resiliency. Because if the buildings collapse, None of what we have done as far as making all kinds of, you know, beautiful effort to make a building green is going to matter. So, recently, uh, USRC and, uh, uh, issued a press release. And with their permission, I decided to share uh, some excerpts from that uh, press release. Why should we care about seismic resiliency? Okay, now they very nicely categorize the benefit of seismic resiliency in how you measure sustainability. Because sustainability, as we talked about it, is balancing the social, economic, and environmental impact of our actions. Okay, so on the social level, ladies and gentlemen, we know that bulk of uh, our biggest problem in the state of California that our leaders have been talking about last several years is affordable housing. LA, in fact, was rated the, the least affordable housing market in the United States. And I think seven out of 10 cities in California were in that list, out of 20, uh, if I remember correct. Uh, but none of this is news to you. <clears throat> so protect our affordable housing. That's why we should care about resiliency. It's a common sense. Most of these buildings that are what we call naturally occurring affordable housing stock are the buildings that were built in the 50s and 60s and 70s that are vulnerable. So let's protect them. Then shield communities from chaos. When, when, if uh, we have the big one or when we have the big one, there are gonna be millions of people homeless. How are we gonna deal with that if, if we let things just the way they are, a status quo, 
Do nothing. Just wait. We have a chance to minimize that. We need to inform the public about personal risks. Simple things, ladies and gentlemen. It takes about $5,000, three to four, five thousand dollars to bolt a house on its foundation. Think about when it moves, so, sometimes it's just gone. It's red tagged. It's not usable anymore. Sometimes, yeah, you can move it back, but it's very expensive to repair a building. So educating the property owner that, hey, now that you have all this value in your property to take the time to pay the attention to retrofit this little house, it's going to save your whole saving of your life for your family and your uh, retirement. So, and promote social justice. Social justice, why? Because... Uh, uh, most of the lower income working class people are the ones that live in these older buildings that are disproportionately uh, impacted. Now, economic benefits. We need, uh, when people are homeless, ladies and gentlemen, when they're worried about their kids being on the street, do you think they're going to care about your businesses? Would you? No. You're going to try to figure out how to, you're going to house your kids or your family or your mother or your uh, uh, older grandmother that is dependent on you. So there is a, there is a direct uh, connection between the housing issues and economic stability, and then uh, small businesses. This is, I'm sure, this is not secret to you. Many of you that are related to uh, the Chamber of Commerce, this 99.2% uh, of California's economy, fifth largest economy in the world, is made up of small businesses. And these are the small businesses that occupy these commercial office buildings or tilt-up buildings or that don't even know. Now, we know uh, through some really hard work by others, like Lucy Jones and Caltech and uh, USC and so on and so forth, uh, Center for Southern California Center for Earthquakes, that th there is serious cost. A great shakeout. To, is, they're telling us that there will be $113 billion in reconstruction costs. But this was, by the way, these estimates are a little bit old, and as you know, construction cost has gone up. I would not be surprised that this is underestimated for today's. Now, then we have environmental benefits. This is something that even I, being in this uh, field uh, of sustainability, building, and so on for almost 30 years, I didn't even comprehend this as uh, uh, nicely they put this in writing. There are health issues associated with not doing something about these retrofitting buildings, ladies and gentlemen. We all know that many of these old buildings contain asbestos and lead. And these are, when released in air, airborne, they can actually impact others. For example, Santa Monica has now the best and the most comprehensive ordinance in the state of California. They cover almost every type of building, thousands of buildings. They're going to retrofit. But do you think because they're going to do that, they're going to be protected when the time comes for the great, the big one? No, because there are Santa Ana winds that are going to take all these debris off of these other cities, the buildings that come down and expose their asbestos and lead and bring it like uh, naturally happens, usually. So 
uh, this is why just our city borders do not really protect us. We need to realize that. It's great, they're showing leadership, city of LA, city of uh, Santa Monica, Beverly Hills, West Hollywood, and others, Pasadena, Long Beach, they're in the early processes. Um, Torrance, just a couple of weeks ago, they decided to go forward with their uh, assessing their vulnerable buildings. So they're taking the leadership, but you need a more comprehensive regional effort to really uh, d protect ours. Now, there's also a possibility that these toxic materials could actually get into our groundwater and uh, and we already, you know, we have we have been in drought for many years, and this is an ongoing issue for us. And with that, also we can um, uh, disturb native and endangered species. And uh, once these toxics get into the our storm drains, they're going to go end up into the ocean or into our creeks. And that's where our endangered species are. So we have so many environmental issues. As I said, even me being in this business for as long as I have been, I haven't really thought about. Now, this is a new one that it's interesting. It came up at a hearing recently. Uh, U.S. Green Building Council representative, they brought this up, is that uh, we don't have enough landfill in the state of California if the projections are correct on the big one, if we have that many, those many buildings that are going to be come down, we don't have enough landfill to take them to here in California. So what do we do? I don't have any answers for that. But we, uh, I think this uh, really, uh, shed light, this uh, press release that was distributed by USRC really shed light why what we're doing here today together, coming together under the le leadership of BizFed, which is their kind of uh, uh, diverse group of people. That, that's one of the advantages of BizFed, brings us all together, is important for the future of the state of California and its population. With that, um, uh, I'd like to introduce our first speaker.